these oceans out there. When the climbers got to the top of Mount Everest, 1953, the year I was born, they got up here on Mount Everest, they began to find something interesting. Petrified clams on top of Mount Everest. In Peru, a couple years ago, they found giant oysters up to 11 feet across, two miles above sea level. That's a big oyster. You should see the pearl. And these clams are interesting. I've got some on the table down here. They're petrified clams in the closed position. Now think about it for a minute. When a clam dies, it opens. The muscle inside relaxes. The ligaments on the outside pull the shell open almost instantly. When a clam dies, it opens up. How would you get bazillions of petrified clams in the closed position on top of mountains all over the world? Well, I would like to point out, Your Honor, that uh, Mount Everest is a little ways from the beach, number one. Number two, uh, clams do not climb mountains very well. And number three, when a clam dies, it opens. The best explanation for this is they were buried alive. Sometimes huge beds of these are found. A guy in Op, Alabama said, Brother Hoven, you want some petrified clams for a museum? I said, yeah. He said, they're four feet thick in my backyard. When he rototills his garden, he brings up thousands of petrified clams, closed petrified clams. We've got a bunch in our museum down in Pensacola, Florida. Even f fragile items like eggs are found fossilized. I believe the sediments would settle out of this flood. Fine sediments would preserve things in incredible detail. Here's a fossilized jellyfish. We have an arm to an octopus, fossilized octopus arm in our museum. Soft tissue simply doesn't fossilize under very special conditions are required. The Bible says the foundation